<laughs> Hello, Five Star. Welcome. Happy Thursday, July 15th. We're already halfway through July. Can you believe it? Oh, man. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, so I'm here with your broker support team. And today we are going to talk about prospecting in July. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're halfway through this summer season. It's going by really fast. We're all tired. We all want to go to the beach. I don't want to pick up the phone and ask for any more business because I just want a break. Anybody feel that way? <laughs> just want to go to the beach. It's right? hard to be at the beach when you have uh, buyers. <laughs> yes, and you have buyers and you're running every night and you can't get a break. So today we are going to talk to you about prospecting in July and keeping your business in a steady flow. We're also going to do some live role play for you. So um, if you're afraid to pick up the phone, we have our master caller, Doug Hale here. <laughs> Yay. I don't know Hello, about Doug. that, but I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you for that invite. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. So I'm going to just pass it over to Doug and let him just share with you from, from his heart and just give you a little bit of, of what he does every day and um, take it from here, Doug. All right. Well, hey, good morning, gang. And I'm, I'm excited that those of you are kind of tuning in on this dreary. I said, this is a great day if you're a duck, right? <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but again, what we talk about with regards to prospecting, it was kind of interesting to me that, you know, we, we use that word kind of broad, don't we? Prospecting. And, you know, we could be in Meyer last night talking to people not wearing the appropriate clothing, right? Um, about real estate, because this is the day and age that real estate conversations, they just morph. They just come from nowhere, right? Everybody wants to know more about real estate. And even if they're not moving right now, it's a great, it's a great segue. It's a great way to, to be able to do that. Um, I look at that as kind of one opportunity uh, to kind of have these conversations with people as you run into people. Um, the, the, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today, though, is a little bit more of a, what I'll call intentional prospecting and what Doug Hale does every day of his life. And uh, I've done this long enough that I realized that, again, I, I've got to be that rainmaker every day, right? I mean, I've got to be out there. I've got to be making those calls. Um, when you guys call into broker support and you ask, well, okay, I've got my 40 hours done. I've taken the test. Now, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the unfortunate part is, you know, that's not, you don't learn how to sell real estate in that 40 hour class, right? right. We've all said the next step is we've got to start prospecting for business. Now, the easiest people to prospect for is who? Family, friends, what we all talk about with our sphere of influence. And for me, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't want to reach out. I want to reach out to everybody that I know, whether it's family, whether it's friends. Um, so I take the first part of every day, kind of that religious time that I haven't checked the voicemail yet. I haven't checked an email yet. No other distractions for the day are in place so that I can focus primarily on working what? On my business, not in my business. Because once we once we pick up the phone and start doing some email or do some email returns, some, some calls about your daily business, you miss the opportunity to work on your business. And that's what prospecting is all about. So I take that first hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. I set a goal for myself to make how many calls to, again, in this case, family, friends, uh, people that need to know. No different than as you get into real estate, people that need to know that you're in real estate, right? Mm -hmm. How often is that that people just say, well, gosh, so what are you doing now? And here's a perfect opportunity to be able to say, hey, look, I've just started a brand new career in real estate. I'm working with five-star real estate. Can't wait to get my real estate business off the ground. I've set a goal for myself to sell 10 houses. Pick a number, pick a number, 10 houses this year but I need your help. And yeah. again, we talk about scripts. Um, I'm very Italian, right? So I love to talk, <laughs> but scripts are great for me because it keeps me on track, mm -hmm. okay? I want the outcome of that phone call to be very positive. 
and to be able to be a good listener, listen to what my prospect is saying, and then obviously be able to, to act accordingly. So in that first hour, hour and a half, you know, and I've always said some of the best salespeople that I know, they're, they're great with scripts, right? Whether you're selling a car, whether you're selling furniture, or for heaven's sakes, the most expensive thing you'll ever buy in your life, which is real estate, right? Mm -hmm. People are scripted, but the good news is you probably don't know that. Why is that? Because they internalize what they want to say. So if I'm saying that same script over and over and over again, even before I get on the phone with someone, what a difference that makes, right? Yeah. So Kim, if I'm calling you and I'm just kind of picking on you a little bit this morning, but let's say, you know, let's say, you know, we've known each other for a long, long time mm -hmm. and gosh, it's been, it's been since COVID, it's been since all kinds of different things have come up since we've talked. Okay. I might pick up the phone and say, Hey, Kim, man, this is Doug Hale over at Five Star. Again, for me, I can say this is brand new for me because again, Five Star is only 11 months old for Doug Hale, right? Mm -hmm. So I can say, hey, Kim, it's been a long time since we've talked. I don't know if you know that I've, I've moved companies. Uh, moved, no, I, moved didn't, I didn't know. Let's, let's play it out. No, I didn't know that. Tell me yeah. what's going on, Doug. Yeah. It's been moved. a long year, you know? It's been a long year. But first of all, I have to apologize because it's been a long time since we've talked. And that's on me. Uh, again, I just want to follow up with you, see how things are with you, see how things are with the family. It's, it's really been a long time. Yeah, I appreciate you what reaching happened? out. You know, it's been kind of a lonely year. We've lost touch with people. And I'm just finding I just want to be around people, interact, and feel that connection again. It's just been a really rough year. Man. So thank you for reaching out. I'm so glad to hear from you. Yeah, well, and, and it's it's my pleasure. This is kind of fun because I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed on, on Five Star. Uh, I want to set a time with you sometime to kind of do that. But I need your help today. Um, huh? I'm, I'm looking at a pad of buyers over here that, I mean, this is a crazy real estate market. Bunch yeah, I've heard. I've heard like houses are selling like for you know, 30, 40, 50,000 over. Is that true? You got it. You got it. You are here in the rights, in the right things. Yep, they sure are. The problem for me, though, is I've got all these folks that want to buy a house and I really don't have a house to sell them because we have, I mean, notoriously low inventory. This is, this is just a crazy time. But what I love to do is reach out to a lot of people that I know and ask them who they know that might possibly be thinking about buying or selling. In this case, selling. Kim, do you know anybody that, uh, I keep thinking of people that you work with um, mm -hmm. that might be thinking about selling their place? Hmm. Do you think of anybody? I can't right now, but I'm so glad you asked because you know, I, I will pay attention. And if I hear of anybody that's thinking of moving, I definitely will send them your way. I'd love to help you. Uh, um, in any way that I can. Yeah, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, if I get somebody, can I just text their name over to you? You can certainly do that. You can certainly, okay. and again, it, it's kind of fun because I love to kind of check with people periodically. I mean, if there, there might be, uh, maybe you don't know anybody today, but let's say, you know, if I check with you again in three months, maybe there might be people that, maybe kids, kids that go to school, um, maybe someone at your church, you know, any and all circumstances apply. So, Again, I sure appreciate you, you spending time kind of thinking about that. Would it be all right if I give you a call back maybe in, in three months just to check in and, and ask? Yeah, that'd be great. But why wait three months? Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That sounds perfect. <laughs> sounds perfect. Well, and again, I always love to end with things like, so, Kim, when do you plan on moving? All right? Yeah, if, yeah. You're kind of kicking that around and don't know. Yeah, well, well, I'll tell you, I'm considering moving, but I really love my home. And there's just one, one reason I would move. And that's if you could find me the perfect lake house, but I don't want to pay 40 grand over. Well, let's not, <laughs> let's not do that, Kim, but hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take you up on your suggestion. Let's have coffee and okay. uh, maybe we can catch up there. How's, how does Tuesday work? Tuesday, what time works for you? Yeah, let's, let's go one o'clock. How's that sound? All right. I'll see you where we meet at. Uh, we can we can definitely do Big B or Starbucks, whichever you prefer. Well, I'm a Big B fan for sure. I love it. I All love right. It. All right, two o'clock, Big B. I'll see you then. There you go. Hey, hey. I kind of got off a little bit on the script there, but again, it 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 plants the seed, right? Kind of gets that conversation started. I'm a guy that loves to pick up the phone. Um, no, I don't send a lot of emails. I don't. 
do the drip campaigns. I mean, all of the technologies, the texting, things like that. Uh, my wife is always one that says, people want to talk to you, Doug. They like you, they know you, they trust you. Pick up the phone, take the time to catch up. Yeah. Well, what was interesting with that was I was encouraging conversation. Yeah. And, and so we don't have to stick to our script. It's always script to dialogue, right? Or uh, Yeah, script to dialogue. So I was like, happy to hear from you. And most of your friends will, most of them will. The, I think the key is, is that we don't want to be on the phone too long because then they won't pick up your call the next time. So you want to, you want to connect, touch base, set it up and get off. So I was encouraging like, Hey, I miss you. Let's get together. And most of the people will, re will probably respond that way. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, your goal in that call is to set the appointment. Yep. Right? I mean, obviously there's good dialogue that happens before that, but the end goal is that you get, you set that appointment to get face to face. And the sooner you do that in that call, I mean, Again, it kind of directs the way the end of the call is going to go. I, I enjoy doing that. Yep. So the main, for, the main thing is, Doug, I think, is that you are waving your flag. Mm. When, when some, no one waves your flag the way you do, right? <laughs> so if you think about a flag that's, that's being affected by the wind, it's moving. And so if you're not moving your flag, your business is not moving. The dial is not moving. So every time you pick up the phone and initiate a conversation with someone else, think about that flag beginning to move. And if that flag's not moving, no one knows you're there, right? That's when you see that big American flag, it's proud, right? It says, I'm an American. And you need to be proud of what you do and you need to be waving your own flag. And if you wave your own flag enough, others are going to see that flag waving and they're going to start waving it for you. For and sure. that's what Doug is talking about, about having this business that he's had for a number of years um, where he's been waving his own flag. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly right. Well, and, and, and again, what I, what I wanna reiterate to folks, especially this time, I mean, this is a tough time to get into real estate, right gang? I mean, it's an unusual time, yeah. but yet there's so many great opportunities here that if more and more people know that you're in the business, more and more people know you're there to help, Again, I use, we keep picking on Nick Sparks on this call, right? Uh, I'm, every week when we talk about, and this guy is just knocking it out of the park. And why is that? Because Nick, if you're listening, if you're watching, you're doing the right things, man. You're, you're on the phone, you're prospecting every day, you're in front of people every day. If you're, if you're not intentional about doing that, the day kind of gets away. And at the end of the day, you revisit that and say, wait a minute. Did I really work on my business? Did I really grow it this day? Um, and again, I think that's an important piece. Um, the, other, the other important piece real quick, and then I'll let you talk, yep. Is, yep. Real, is the energy, guys. That's what I was going to ask you. What about the confidence? Got to have the confidence. Got to be able to, when I prospect, this sounds crazy. I might move the screen a little bit, but I stand up, right? When I'm prospecting, I'm standing up. Remember, I'm Italian, so I'm using my hands. Um, I put my little earbuds in. I make conversation. I'm smiling, right? Yeah. You can't see it over there, but there's a mirror right now that I'm looking in. So I better be smiling, right? Because that transcends all the emotion like Tracy talks about on the phone. So the things that you do um, on the phone to create the energy, to create the, this great conversation that you're about to have, are super important to the results that you'll get during your prospecting. Yeah, that's awesome. And one quick question came in from Michelle. She yeah. said, she asked, how do I get some scripts? Um, email me, Kim at fivestarleaders.com. I have some very simple dialogue scripts. I think they're some of the best out there yep. that I picked up from another company. And remember, you can always adjust them but I'd be more than happy to send those out too. Right. And at the end of the day, the more you do it, the more you make them your own. Like, like Doug said, it becomes a conversation in your head. It's easy to have when you own it. And the more you do it, the more you begin to own it. Now this sounds crazy, but it happens when I'm talking to the mirror in the morning before I get on the phone. And I do, my wife thinks I'm losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> she says, who are you talking to? Well, I'm talking to myself. I'm internalizing what I want to say. Read those scripts over and over and over and over and over and over again and internalize those because mm -hmm. then it just becomes you. Mm -hmm. And the questions that you ask, uh, again, I think you're going to get great results. So read the scripts. It's like Tiger Woods. How many times does he putt during the day when, when he was in, uh, right. in his prime? It's the same way. Read the scripts, read the scripts, 
when you're ready. And, and again, it talks about the confidence piece, Kim. That's the confidence that comes from, from practicing before you, before you get on the phone. Well, one of the things you did when you were calling me was you asked for the business. It's really important. I was always taught, if you don't ask for the business, the answer is no. Oh, yeah. but two things, you can't be a secret agent. <laughs> and two, if you don't ask for the business, the answer is no. Exactly. So you, you came around and people love to help. You said, I could use your help, yep. right? Yep. It's real simple. It's very normal dialogue. It's not, um, who are the five people that you know that I could call? It's not, you know, it's not like a robot. It's like, I just could use your help. I'm getting started in this brand new career. I'm so excited about it. Yep. And I just love to have you help me. Who do you know? Are you? It's an invitation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Boy, that is so right, you guys. And again, the more you do that, the easier it gets asking that question. I mean, right. you just, it might feel a little awkward when you do it for the first few times because it's like, well, I don't want to come across, I don't want to be salesy and I don't want to come across like being not genuine. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for you to just absolutely ask the question, hey, who yeah. do you guys know that needs my help? And come yeah. from a sincerity standpoint, um, you really come from a need to know. I really want to know. And so that's an important piece that, again, in that, again, Tracy, as you talk about, that transcends over the phone. People get it and they want to help. They do. So and sometimes I think we're afraid of the rejection. Yeah. yeah. Um, we to hear no. And someone said this to me once when someone tells me no, it means they just need to know more. And uh, so sometimes yeah. we just don't want to hear no. It's like, what if they reject me? Yeah. Right. Well, but what if they really know somebody? The times I followed up to, after open houses and I didn't want to make the call at six o'clock and I found every reason in my head. They're probably having dinner. They're at their kid's <laughs> school event. And I was just talking myself right out of it. And by the time I was done, I had a new buyer and I just kind of just tapped myself in the head. Like you got, you have to rethink this, Kim, because oh. always come away with the positive results. Now you might not get on the first call, second call, but you're always planting the seed too, okay. right? Yep. You're staying yep. top of mind. You always want to be top of mind. And it is truly all, and that's exactly right. It is truly all about mindset. Yes. Um, I, my wife will kid me, and, and this is no kidding. She can tell me 10 times a day, no, right? Doesn't bother me at all. Doesn't bother me at all. But then I get on the phone, I make that call, someone tells me no, and I do what? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man, I said no. And my mind should say, Next. Yes. Next. Right. So yeah. very good point. Very good, good point. Well, so, Tracy, well, oh, go ahead. No, I just was saying, so if you, if you start the day prospecting, you go with high energy again, the day kind of takes care of itself. It does. Yep. And again, I think you're going to, you're going to be really important, really impressed with the fact that you're setting a schedule for yourself. You're being productive during that time. And that's the time that you can grow your business. So, uh, Perfect. Go ahead. I didn't awesome. Well, Tracy, we were talking about um, in this market, we call for sale by owners quite a bit, right? Yeah. We have to make that phone call. And so we were talking about that. And I want to pass that to you. Some of the, the ways that we can approach them, some of the, the 295s, how we ask for that. When you call for sale by owner, how does your conversation look? Well, I'll tell you, the biggest thing when you're dealing with a for sale by owner is they, um, they're really just looking to save money. I mean, that's what it comes down to. There's, there's always two, two markets, right? The, the market where the FISBOs do really well, and that's when we're in a seller's market. And then there's the market when it's the buyer's market, right? They're, they're, they're a little bit different. In the seller's market, um, we find a lot more for sale by owners that are out there, and we're definitely seeing that right now. And so when you have a client that calls you and you've got the searches set up for them, right? And you're looking at their searches, they're looking at their searches, you're not finding anything. Suddenly you're stretching out a little bit and you're looking at the for sale by owners and they're looking at the for sale by owners. So sometimes you might find the for sale by owner first with the house at 123 Main Street, or maybe your buyer finds it. But at the end of the day, you've got to get your client in to see this house. The challenge becomes... Um, whether or not that this seller's agent intends to pay buyer's agency commission, because that's what you're looking for, right? You want to get paid. You've been running this buyer around sometimes for months. You know, you could have dozens and dozens of, of showings in with this client and you still don't have a win yet. So some of the challenges that you run into when you, when you work with a for sale by owner is number one, commission. Like, how do you explain that 
uh, your worth, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you explain the, the five-star 200? I shouldn't say the five-star $295. I should say the uh, broker transaction fee because it's really hard to find a broker that doesn't have one. So no matter what agent that walks through that door or knocks on that door or makes that phone call, they're all going to have that fee. So you need to understand um, the, the different forms that are needed, right? When you have a for sale by owner, you don't have an agency relationship with that seller, do you? You have one with the buyer, or perhaps you're trying to get an agency relationship with that seller, yeah. right? Um, you need a show and sell form, right? If you're going to show that house, and I, and I do that form on the front end. You shouldn't go see the house first and then say, oh, we'd like to write an offer, and here's my 3%, and here's my 295. No, before you step through the threshold of that door in a typical MLS listing, you know what the commission is before you walk through that door and you should also have that in writing signed by all parties before you walk through the door of a for sale by owner so it's a show and sell authority form it's in the five star company forms in dot loop you'll find it there if you have any trouble get a hold of me kim or doug um, we're happy to help you find it but you should have Great. that form and yeah five star forms is called compensation form compensate oh, compensation form sorry yeah, just so if you go looking for it. Yeah, you're, you're definitely going to need that form and you're going to need it filled out. You're also going to want that two hundred ninety five dollars on there. Mm -hmm. And we just um, and that's a tough conversation. Like it's a really easy conversation for me to have because I've said it many times and it goes back to Doug's scripting. The more you say these things, the more they become your own words. But what Five Star has done is they put together um, some language that I want you uh, new to industries to begin reading and familiarizing yourself with them so that when you're talking with a for sale by owner or even your regular buyer, because we have to disclose the 295 for everyone, right? We do. We do. But so here, here's what it says. It says broker admin fee, $295. Why? Right. It says we must have a paper trail for compensation five-star receives. The $295 is charged to both parties when there is an unrepresented buyer, a FISBO, for example. So I have a buyer, right? Kim, Doug, you've got a buyer. How much do you? How much is on your buyer's agency contract? I typically do three percent plus two ninety five. Exactly. Right. So yeah. that's our. So that's that is already documented. But now we're writing on a FISBO, right? Here comes the FISBO. Well, I'm not paying you commission. I I, I don't. Why do I have to pay you this two ninety five? Well, it says it gets charged to both parties even when there's an up, unrepresented buyer, a FISBO. The compensation agreement was created with this in mind. The broker admin fee does not grant or imply representation in any way. So it has nothing to do with that buyer's agency relationship, right? Right. It is Five Stars policy to collect the $295 from all parties we, if we are the broker involved in the transaction. So if we're the broker, bottom line, and if we're the only broker, it gets charged on both sides. Okay, if there's another broker, guess what? They have usually an admin fee on their side as well. So we only collect it when we're representing the buyer or the seller or the unrepresented party, okay? Um, if we are only broker in this transaction. The broker admin fee is used to cover a myriad of expenses. Five Star pays E&O insurance as agents. They don't charge us for that. So at some point this has to get paid, right? So Five Star Real Estate has used the $295 as a way to offset those costs. Um, from the E&O premiums and liability claims to the staff who manages a ledger uh, for the transaction, including creating one for the buyer. So everything that we see at Five Star Real Estate, that 295, it really becomes a piece of everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so begin to read that. And, and we're putting that in the in dot loop as well, right? Did anyone look to see if it's there yet? It's going to be there. Um, but we want you to familiarize your, yourself with knowing why we charge the 295. You have to disclose this to your buyer, whether it's represented or a FISBO unrepresented, right? You've got to be able to explain to them why it is that your broker has this extra fee that I always say to people, this is not something I collect on the upfront. It's something that's paid at closing. It's disclosed to you on your closing disclosure. And if you never close a house with me, you never pay the 295. Okay. That's exactly what I say. Same thing. And, and again, when you talk about it being paid at closing, it's the same thing. What you just read to us, wait, I mean, all inclusive, it's all in there, right? Most people just don't understand that. And I think that explanation will serve, will serve all of us well.
Yep, yep. So when so when you disclose that 295, you should be disclosing it on your buyer's agency contract. It should be disclosed in the show and sell authority, the compensation agreement for a FISBO. It should be disclosed in your net sheet when you're doing. Use that Star Title app, right? Um, the Title I, Star Title I app. Use that app and in there, disclosure 295. Find every opportunity to have, um, to have uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, that you're, 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 you're disclosing, you're being very upfront about everything you want them to know, because at the end of the day, you want them to know that bottom line. Doug, you talked about yesterday when we were talking about this call today, that, you know, commission is historically about 6%, but then there's all these other fees that come in, right? Yep. And, and yep. if you think about that as just an extra 2%, that's what I usually do. Is that what you said too, Doug, yesterday? Yeah, I did, yep. yeah. And, and, and again, people don't know this. I mean, how often do they sell a house they have no idea sometimes the, the expenses that go with that. And again, this is that ability to disclose all of those things. And again, the, the more transparent you are, the word. The, there's the word you're looking for, right? Yes, the more the transparent word. you are about that, again, it goes a long ways. And again, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'll have those conversations up front. Again, just reminding them, you know, at closing, this is what it's going to look like. It, it goes so much better when you do that. Well, yep. typically because like Tracy started out, they want to save money, but they also are unrepresented. We had a situation this week where the for sale by owner doesn't want to provide title work. You have title work. So why do I have to do it? So even though you are not representing them, I find we still have to educate them along the way. Right. Yep. Right. right. Yep. Yeah. So what I'd like to do before we close up is I'm Tracy, would you be willing to call me and just act like you're, I have a house for sale. Yeah. How would you approach it? There Sounds go. good. And then we have some other questions too. So, oh, okay. Um, yep. Okay. okay so, uh, say that again. Am I, who am I? You are. What's my role? You're Tracy. I'm the for sale by owner. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. <laughs> I'm calling you. Yep. Oh, hi. This is Kim. Hey, Kim. It's Tracy Johnson with Five Star Real Estate. How are you? Hi, Tracy. I'm good. Thank you. Great. Hey, I know that you uh, have a house for sale at 123 Main Street, and I am a buyer's agent working with Five Star Real Estate, and I have a buyer that's interested in your house. I'm wondering whether or not you're working with buyer's agents. Um, well, I just want to sell my house. Um, yeah, I'd love to have you show it. That'd be great. Great, great. We would love to see it. Um, um, do you have any offers in hand right now? No, nope, not right now. I've had some people look at it, but yeah, it's still, it's still available. Okay, great, great. Um, you know, we would love to come see it one day this week, maybe Thursday or Friday. Would that work for you? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. What time are you thinking? Um, probably after 5 p.m. Would that would that be okay? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, okay great. Um, I was just wondering, um, have you given consideration to um, what you might offer in buyer's agency commission if someone like myself were to bring a buyer along and uh, bring you an offer? Hmm, I, I, I guess, no, I hadn't really thought about that. What's that okay. mean? Well, typically um, in, a, in a transaction between a buyer and a seller, there's historically about 6% commission um, in a sale. And um, typically what we see in a, in a buyer's agency side would be that a seller would be offering 3% commission to a buyer's agent. So in this case, that would be me. I would bring a buyer um, through the front door. If we wrote a, an offer that was acceptable to you as a seller, um, I would help not only the buyer get to closing, but I would also aid and assist you in the entire process of, of getting that house to the closing table. And so I know that there's a lot of value that I could offer you. Um, you probably um, don't sell houses very often. Um, I see this a lot. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really my privilege to, uh, to be able to be involved in transactions with buyers and sellers. And in this case, I, 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 I know that I probably could offer a lot of assistance to you in getting the house to close. So, yeah, I, I guess so. So my house is listed at 200. So you said 3%. So that's about $6,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. And then you'll, you'll just, you'll help me get it there. Cause you know, I, I just want to sell my house and, and if you can help me get there, yeah, that, that sounds like a pretty good deal. 
Yeah, maybe I could. What I'd like to do is I'd like to send you um, a compensation agreement that kind of outlines, you know, who I am, that, hi, I'm Tracy, uh, I'm a buyer's agent, but I would be bringing a buyer uh, through your property. And uh, it would be a document that would just kind of outline um, the fact that I would be bringing this buyer, I would stay representing my buyer, I wouldn't represent you, but I would be asking you to pay a commission at closing. And then um, my uh, my broker actually has a fee called a, a buyer uh, broker transaction fee. It's two hundred and ninety five dollars. It's paid by both a buyer and a seller in any transaction that I write, especially in a situation like you where you're not represented by another agent. My but my broker basically basically takes on all the liability for the transaction. So at the end of the transaction, a two hundred and ninety five dollar broker transaction fee is going to be disclosed to you on your closing statement. So I'll have both the commission that I would be asking you to pay and then that $295 disclosed um, on this compensation agreement. And if we never come to an agreement, you don't pay any of it. But if we did, we would agree on the front end before I walked through the door with the buyer. Yeah, so could, if I, that's agreeable to you, I, I could either come early, I could talk to you about it when we get there, or I could email it to you and you could have some time to, to review it. Um, why don't you email it to me? My email is... Kim Anderson at fivestarleaders.com. Um, and then maybe I can look at it. And if I have any questions, we could just pick up the phone and review it. How's that? Yeah, that would be great. I'm super transparent great. and uh, would love to chat with you about any questions that you might have. Um, and I look forward to bringing my buyer through um, later in the week. And I'll give you a call as soon as I confirm a date and time with her. Okay. And it'd be great too, if there's anything else that might, that I might have to pay for, if you could kind of help me with that. Like I said, I'm unrepresented. I just want to sell my house. And um, yeah, any help you can give me, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a net sheet that I could put together for you just as a service that kind of gives you an idea of what a sale might look like, right? I know what you're asking for the house, but there's a lot of fees that are, that are associated with the sale of the house, like title insurance and um, county and state transfer tax. Do you know that when you sell your house, the government wants to get in your pocket? And they're gonna collect about $7.60 um, for every $1,000 that you sell. So I wanna make sure that you really have a good idea of what those costs look like. Um, and if I could do that for you, I would send that over to you as well. And whether or not we come to an agreement, I just know this will be a helpful tool for you going forward. Sure, yeah, that sounds good. I really appreciate the help, Tracy. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I'll, when I get off the phone with you, I'll put together a few things and send them over to you for your review. And then just give me a call if you have any questions. All right. I'll see you Thursday at five. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks. You too. Super transparent. I love yeah. that word. Thanks for the softball there. You threw me on. Hey, what are my fees going to be? Yeah. You did great. <laughs> it just, it, it seems so hard, but it was just conversation. Now I prompted her a little bit because I wanted you to hear the answers, but yeah. she, she came right out of the box with everything. And my face got red. I was like, a little nervous. <laughs> see, even we get a little heated when we have to make these calls right i don't know after 20 30 years you still you're still always working to be the pro right so that was great tracy yeah did you say we had some questions too yeah there are um michelle says do you prospect at locations like the gas pump grocery stores etc you can and so i mean some people you know you on the grocery cart you know some people they don't prospect that way but they advertise that way and i like what doug said um, Michelle, is that we're just being an agent wherever we are. I mean, you could be at the groceries. It's crazy where conversations come up. Like I told the story, I don't remember if it was here or not, but I told the story where I ended up selling a condo after I went to buy a mattress. And when I was at the mattress <laughs> store, I started chatting with this other couple and they could tell I knew a lot about memory foam. Mattresses. <laughs> the salesperson was like, well, I guess I'll just sit down over here. And, the, and then finally the guy says to me, well, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I actually sell, I sell homes. And he's like, oh, we need your phone number. And I did, I sold yeah, for, yeah. So, so. so be, if you're just being your true authentic self, like I always tell myself, I'm a helper, right? Well, yeah. I'm a helper in real estate and I get paid to do this because I love it. And I'm very you know, passionate about it, but I'm also passionate about other things like mattresses, right? And my true <laughs> authentic self came through and that's what that person saw. So if you're really good at picking out watermelons or, or grapefruit, <laughs> I mean, just be your true authentic self. Who knows? You, you too could probably sell a house um, by being in the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. And I see Portia asked about what is the app? I believe she's um, talking about star title app, right? For the net sheet. Yep. She yeah, is. Star yep. title MI. 
It, uh, it's called Star cool. Title One, I think is the actual app. Okay, yeah. yep. And they have amazing app there. Um, it's free, but there's an, a premium version for $9.99 if you send, if you download it, just send accounting a note saying you downloaded it, we'll reimburse the $9.99 on your agent um, uh, invoice. So, yeah, and it's called Star Title and One, it's O-N-E, okay? Right, because um, when I was helping an agent the other day, you know, they said yes to the commission, they said yes, the seller said yes to the commission, yes to two ninety five, dollars but they had no idea about title insurance, the... Um, the doc stamps, the closing uh, closing prep fee, the document fee, and so I always say it's an estimate. I don't I don't try to get their loan balance. I don't try to prorate their taxes. That's on them. Um, when we get to closing, then the title company will help with that. But give them an estimate that you know this deal is going to cost you seven thousand eight hundred dollars approximately in closing costs. So good job, good job, Kim. That's exactly yeah. right. And you use I use that word estimate all the time, just yeah. simply because they're. I mean, it, it's going to get close, but again, it still gives them the view from ten thousand feet to say, here's what I can expect. Yeah. Right. Well, and I'll tell you, when you are on a listing appointment, and one of the things I always say is, I don't know what my competition does, but I know that when I leave the table with a seller, I have left them with an idea of what the cost to sell this house is. Because yep. there's two things that are important to them, right? Number one is, what is what do you believe the value is of the home? Number two is, how much is this going to cost? Exactly. And I don't know that everyone leaves you know, that estimate there. But when I leave, I make sure it's there. It's even a good idea to get your sellers to initial it or sign it. There is a space for that yeah. because that, that just makes you feel better that I not only gave it, we had a conversation about it to the point that I had you sign it. So yeah. Yeah. good. Good practice. Good. Well, it looks like we went through our half an hour. Anything else on your mind that you want to share before we close it up? I think we could keep coming back to some of these um, topics and help you um, just to understand how to present some of these buyer agency, real estate agency. Um, I know sometimes we're just afraid that like, how do I say this? And I think hopefully after you hear Doug talk, Tracy talk, it really is just conversations okay. and, and sharing information and being transparent with them. For sure. Yeah. And asking for the sure. business, right? So yeah. anything else on your minds today? Uh, Until next time. Yeah, All right. I, I well, believe. thanks for everyone that's uh, chimed in here and we hope you have a great day and we will see you next week. Sounds, sounds great. All thanks, right. Thanks. Bye guys. Have a great All day. Right.